Okay, in this section we're going to do our um, last uh, part of changing fractions to decimals. Uh, and this last part is going to include repeating decimals, because everything we've done up to this point has been what's called a terminating decimal, which means it had the decimal has an end. These aren't going to have ends. So the first one is a very common repeating decimal. It's one-third. And the way that you do this is you go through and you, you do your normal division, right? The numerator divided by the denominator, so 3 into 1. And then we just need to add our extra zeros here. And so when we do 3, if you put 3 in, uh, we, we always raise our decimal. Then 3 times 3 is 9, and so we're going to have remainder 1. So you're going to have a 10 there, and then you put another 3 in, and you're going to have remainder 1, put another 0, and put another 3. And if you notice, the same pattern is going to happen over and over and over again. And the way that you know something repeats, and this is the key point, is that it has to start, it, it, it can't start repeating until you get into these zeros. The zeros that you add on the end are where the repeating happens. So you can't assume something's going to repeat, which means you can't, until you get, you can't assume that you have a repeating up here until you get into zeros. Well, we've obviously got into the zeros. We're seeing that the 3 is repeating. So 1 third is the same as 0.3 repeating. And again, if you had something like 4 and 1 third, that would just be 4.3 repeating. That's how you deal with uh, mixed numbers. It's very easy. Just worry about the fraction part, not about the mixed part. Okay, the next one is 3 sevenths, and this one's more complicated, and it has an interesting thing to it that we'll maybe discuss later. But when you got 3 sevenths, it's going to be 7 going into 3. And we put in a bunch of zeros because we're going to need a lot on this one. So we ask ourselves the question, how many times does 7 go into 3? It doesn't. So 7 goes into 30 four times, and so you're going to have 28. And so you're going to have 2 remainder. How many times does 7 go into, well, bring the 0 down, and so it's going to be 20. goes into it two times, so that's going to be 14. See, we're looking for this to be the same, right? we got 20 here, and we have 60. That's not repeating yet, so we know we're not, re we're not ready to start repeating. 7 goes into 68 times, because 7 times 8 is 56. So now we've got a zero, that, another 0 that comes down. 7 comes into 45 times. Again, we haven't repeated any of our numbers. And so that's going to be a five, remainder 5. 7 goes into 57 times. So that's going to be 49, which is remainder zero or 1. So you have one zero. So seven goes into ten just one time, and so that's going to give you seven, which will be a remainder thirty. And if you notice, now our original part was thirty, here was thirty, we've got our repeating because seven goes into thirty four times, you're gonna have remainder twenty-eight, and so you can see how this process is just gonna repeat itself. Everything's gonna be the exact same. So the answer to this question is uh, point. Four, two, eight, five, seven, one, and then that's what's repeating, right? We, we, this is where we started our repeating at, and so we, we, we stop there when we talk about a repeating. So it's just going to be 0 .428571, 0 .428571, and it goes on in, an infinite number of numbers. It never stops. Repeating decimal never stops. Okay, uh, two more examples of this, com common examples. Uh, 7 over 11. This is a very common, 11, how many times does 11 go into 7? Well, put in your zeros, 11 goes into 70, 6 times, that gives you 66. So remainder 4, 11 goes into 43 times, and so it's going to be um, 33. And now you can start seeing the re repeating. Here is 70, here is 70, seven, 11 goes into 76 times. And you can see how I now I've got remainder 40. There's my remainder 40, so it's the same thing. So you can see how this is just going to be 6363 6, on and on and on and on. So the answer is 0.63. And there's actually a trick for, re, for doing uh, 11s. And the trick is you multiply, if you've got a, a denominator of 11, to find out what the repeating is, multiply the top by 9. So for instance, if I wanted to know what 9 over 11 is, 9 times 9 is 81, so it's going to be 0 0.81 repeating. And that's a trick that always works for when you're dividing by 11. Okay, 4, you got 8 fifteenths. This may look like it's going to this seem like it's going to work out nicely because you got the 5 in there, right? 15 is divisible by 5. But 15 is also divisible by 3, which is what creates the repeating decimal. So we just got to go through and divide in. And this one's going to be a little harder because now we're dividing by 15. But we just have to take our time and multiply well. So 15, how many times does it go into 80? Well, um, 15 times 5 is 75, so that's obviously what 
what you want. 15 goes into 80 75 times. And so that gives you a remainder 5, 0. 15 times 3 is uh, 45. And then you got remainder 5, and all of a sudden you recognize this one very quickly started repeating. Right? You just got 5, 0 over and over and over again. And so what's actually repeating is not the 0.53, it's just the 3. So the answer to 8 15 is just 0 0.5, and then it's 3 with a line over it. Just the 3 has a line over it. The 5 it does not have a line over it. So that's repeating decimals. It should be something that you've maybe seen before. But remember, just divide it normal and then look for the repeating, and it's only what's being repeated that gets the line over it. So like, just like that last case, we didn't put a line over the 5, but we did put it over the 3.